Today on Startup Britain, we're looking at the successful business started by husband and wife team Dick and Pauline Byan. In 2008, the couple decided they need a change of lifestyle and left their busy international careers for her small holding on Dartmoor. They spent years working with local sheep farmers to create their range of 100% British wool bedding. And in 2010, Devon Duvets was born. To this day, all their wool products are handcrafted and supplied by local farmers in Devon and the South West. And I'm delighted that Dick Bayan joins us in the studio. Now, Dick, I can tell you live in Devon because you look so healthy. <laughs> do I? You certainly do. <laughs> now, you came to this country originally from the Netherlands. That's correct. We're delighted you're here. You had a, biz a, a, a career in finance and so on, but then you yeah. and Pauline decided you needed to change your lifestyle by getting into farming and wool products. God, your, your ritzy city-based friends must have thought you were both mad. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Now, the reason is, um, I think Polina, we're in our early uh, 40s, and unfortunately, I got ill, a form oh. of arthritis, and went through my whole body. And you can say the lifestyle we, or I led, was not healthy for me. So, uh, there came a clear advice from uh, my specialist to say, you have to change your life, and, um, and I have to have a more active life. And you come Sometimes, and a lot of people will have that, they come at crossroads, which way do I go? And so, what's the name of that lovely dog that we're seeing there? Who's that? Ash. 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 Lovely. Yeah, our mascot. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, what made you want to get into the, why, why the West Country, why wool, why farming, why knitwear? No, it was uh, uh, Pauline, uh, my wife, uh, she's originally English and living in Holland. Our home language was English. The children were going to an English-speaking school. So, uh, for us to say, okay, the change of life, and um, uh, I owned uh, uh, half of a business together with my uh, father, investment in, um, in uh, property development, and I discussed with him, okay, uh, will you take it all over, we'll step out, and we'll have a change of life. And Pauline and I said we have to have a more authentic life and a more sustainable life. And of course, Pauline being English, and uh, we've traveled uh, through the Southwest before, and we said Devon uh, is a beautiful county to live. Also for the children Weather's to grow Weather's not bad down there for England, is it? No, no, average not. We call it the English Riviera down there. Yeah, yeah, it is <laughs> lovely. I can recommend it. I can recommend it, yeah. So it was a big change of, of life, partly induced by your unfortunate illness, and it's yeah. great to see you looking yeah. so, so well now, but it, it's so different from what you were doing before. There must yes. have been some sort of romance involved, but it's turned into quite a successful business, right? Yes, um, yeah, and of course we had some luck coming our way. Um, we first said, okay, we'll, uh, we start a small holding, uh, have an own vegetable garden, live on your own land, and uh, live a healthy lifestyle. And uh, also for the children growing up, uh, instead of a hectic business life. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people want that. Uh, we made that step, and you can say it, it is a big adventure because you don't know where you end up to. And um, it was in 2008, at the end, that we were approached by Channel 4 uh, for a program, what was called My Dream Farm with Monty Don. Yeah. Uh, we already had the ideas talking to British farmers and about the wool and uh, uh, shearing a sheep cost more than what they got for the wool. And Pauline, already, uh, Pauline and I uh, already had the idea to say, okay, we have to do and look something to support British farm. Um, so, we, um, so from the start, when we started the farm, we were approached. In the beginning, we said, we don't want it, it's quite intrusive, but finally we gave in. Mm. And that ended up in nine months uh, filming uh, mm. for, the, for the program. And they really pushed us. They, uh, Montedon said, this is a great idea. I mm. really want you to develop that in that period. And we have done so. So what happened then from 2010 after Devon Duvos was born, you did the filming, to just before the pandemic? What happened to the growth of the business? Uh, the growth of the business, uh, we started slowly, although uh, when the programme was aired, there was January 2010, yeah. and they pulled it forward uh, to our panic <laughs> a few months. Um, and it was aired on television. We had such a great response. Mm. Uh, the same day or the same evening, 
Uh, we had 1,300 emails in uh, wow. after two days. Good Over 3,000, the phone was constantly ringing. Uh, one of the big retailers, John Lewis, was mentioned in the program. People walked into John Lewis. They said, we want the Devon Duvais, but yeah. of course, nobody's heard of it yeah, really, sure. but uh, on television. And that gave us a big push. And um, so it took a few months uh, to raise the business, to get everything in order and to start uh, producing. And people want to buy it. And the funny thing is, at that time, um, uh, people ordered it, they paid for it, and we said uh, it could take three months. Yeah. And uh, it took that long. And we got lovely letters from people after three months, thank you for my duvet. And now we know in the modern world that this rapidly changed. Uh, if they order it now, they want That's it now. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and where does the actual production take place? The wool is sourced in the southwest and the production 80%. takes place... Yeah, 80% is sourced in the South. And that all goes through the British Wool Organization. Uh, we also certified British Wool. Uh, that also gives the security for, for consumers uh, that it is 100% uh, British Wool. And we have, it, uh, we have it processed and needled for the right filling and the right consistency for our duvets. What is then all made by handmade by seamstresses in, in Devon in our workshop or factory or whatever you want to call it. So yeah. tell, tell me about the business. We'll talk about lockdown in a minute and how that impacted you. Yeah. Uh, where did the business get to by the end, say, of 2019, early 2020? Um, we had an, a nice growth every year. And I think as a business, you also have to be sensible. Uh, you have to control your business, your finances, and make steps uh, what you're able to do and also to give security for the people who work for you. And uh, we were growing about 10, 15% on average a year. That's a lot. Uh, and how, yeah. so how many people were working for you? What sort of scale? At, at, at that time, to? it was 23. Okay, and substantial. I think it, uh, and I think it is now more over 30. So you've actually grown since before the lockdown? Yes. Uh, now we've grown before the lockdown and even uh, to our surprise, because you never know how it will go, in yeah. the lockdown we have excelled. The growth was uh, about 65%. Wow. Yeah, that was immense. Um, and how do you explain that, Dick? How do you explain it? Now, I've always... People spending more time at home, snuggling down, I, they want I, that woolly duvet. I, I think uh, what our advantage was during COVID, that people had more time to go on internet, okay. explore, instead of the fast life, oh, I need a new duvet, yeah, yeah. so quickly buy one because I need one. Now people had time to explore it. And of, of course, wool uh, by itself, of na uh, natural wool, has wonderful pro uh, properties. Uh, it, is, um, uh, it is antibacterial, it resists dust mites, people are good for uh, allergies. Uh, um, it, it is totally biodegradable. Yeah. Uh, what's synthetic uh, is non-biodegradable. So I think uh, it is more that people had the time to investigate and to be more responsible in what they are buying. Now, yeah. you'll, you'll know, as a resident of Devon and Cornwall, it's a very, very beautiful part of the UK. Yeah. Unfortunately, the West Country is one of the poorer parts of the UK, heavily reliant on travel and tourism, another sector that's just yeah. been yeah. Uh, whacked by the pandemic, as we were discussing earlier in the show. As a close observer of the farming scene down in the southwest of England, somebody intimately related, you know, to ta talking to farmers all the time, you do business with yeah. them, how do you think the farmers are getting on in the West Country at the moment? Um, now, first of all, I must uh, uh, say that I've got a lot of respect for the farmers and how they keep on going. And if you look at the wool prices uh, during the pandemic, uh, they, they dropped tremendously they because the whole world trade uh, was on its knees. So, um, uh, so, and that has an effect uh, on the prices. And luckily enough, they've gone up. And for us, it is important also uh, that that industry stays healthy because it is our future. So we want the farmers uh, to, to have good sheep, to have the A grade of wool, uh, what we use. And um, the farmers have gone through a very difficult time and it's still not easy. And I think also you have seen it with Jeremy Clarkson, has done a whole program about it, and I think he highlighted, well, it is not easy. Uh, it's not an easy way of life. Seven days a week, and sometimes 24 hours in a day. So a lot of respect. And yeah, I think uh, for the British public uh, to be conscious to what they buy and, in, uh, and support the British farming industry, I think is very key.
Now, like many uh, Dutch people, you clearly love the UK. There's amazing yeah. close relations between our country. There always has been, except when we play football, of course, because yeah. you're generally better than we are. No, uh, they I haven't won the World Cup, though. You've never won the World Cup. You've never won the World Cup. There are countries that have won the World <laughs> Cup and countries that haven't won the World yeah. Cup. Anyway, I'm teasing you, but you clearly love the UK, uh, and we're delighted that you're here. But as a business peep, as a business person, somebody who's obviously very good with money, somebody who made money in in finance and, and property before you went into uh, uh, Devon Duvets, what do you think of the UK as a place to do business? Be honest. Uh, great. Great, and I've become English as well. Oh, good. So I'm not Dutch anymore. <laughs> I, I've become English. And it's about six, seven years ago. You still support them, though. In I, I, I think um, I think uh, the UK has so much strength. Uh, the people, the industries, and um, uh, I think it is. Besides, uh, it's a great country to live in. Uh, the, the, I, I love the country by uh, itself. The people who live there. I would live here in this country, and for me, every reason also to become English. And I think uh, that the UK has a much greater strength than they give themselves credit to. We do do ourselves down quite a lot, don't yes, we? Yes, yes, and too much. And believe in yourself. And uh, and uh, yeah, I. I th on the other hand, we have lots of viewers we know who are like you. They run small businesses. They're sick and tired of high business rates. They think the government's taxing them too much. We're going from 19 to 25 percent in the pound for corporation tax. Yeah. That's yeah. coming in in 2023, as you know. Yeah. National yeah. insurance contributions from employers are, are going up. What, how would you improve the UK business environment if you could? How to improve it? Um, yeah, I, I think for me it's a quite difficult uh, question to, to answer. Uh, of course, those are measurements uh, the government uh, take, and uh, those are just measurements we have to accept. Yeah. They're just a fact. And uh, it might affect for some businesses their business model or yeah. what they can do or can't do. And I'm, I'm more a person, don't cry about it, it's just how it is. Look at your business model and try to make a good success for of it. So yeah. clearly, Devon Duvets is doing well. You're employing 25 people or so on. Yeah, more, you, yeah. You've got through the lockdown. You actually expanded your business during the lockdown by 60% or so. What's the future for Devon Duvets? How big do you think it can get? Or are you and Pauline, I know you're very much a double act and she's yeah. uh, watching this interview closely. Is it enough to be at the scale you are? Is there a danger about getting too big? You might lose control. It might become too much of a headache. Um, no, I think there is a maximum where you want to go to, and we're not at that maximum yet. Okay. And uh, I can say, Pauline and I are proud that both our children, uh, Jake and Anna, have stepped into the Very into good. the business. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, it is nice to have a future generation growing up into the business. Um, if you look at the statistics, it is only, I think, 20% of businesses which go from a first generation to yeah, a second generation. Right. And only from a second generation to a third is only 10% of the 20%. Wow, so, it's so only 2%, 2%, uh, 2% overall. One in 50. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Pauline and I have discussed it, and I'm busy now with the accountants, solicitors, in one way to make... Devon Duvet is a long existing company in its structure and also it's nice that the children stepped in. And finally, Dick, uh, a yeah. question we ask of all the entrepreneurs who appear on Startup Britain. What's the piece of advice you would give to people watching this show thinking, I'd like to run my own business, have I got it in me? Um, no, everybody has it in them. And it, I think it is more about if you don't have the knowledge yourself, try to get that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, Talk to your accountants or other people around you. Know exactly what you want to do. Uh, is your market uh, there uh, for the product you want to make or what you want to sell? Or And I think especially with COP26, uh, environment uh, is very key. So also, how does it fit into the future? Yeah. Dick Bowen, it's been brilliant talking to you. We really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you and, for having uh, me. All the best to Holland in the next World Cup, <laughs> if you qualify. No, no, but I'll cheer for the UK, <laughs> for England. Nice to see you. OK, nice thank you very much. You. Dick Bowen there of Devon Duvets, a business that he's built with his wife Pauline, and now his children are involved as well.